What's up, nerds? My name's Noah. Welcome to Table Ready, and today we are hopping into our second campaign of our solo campaign with ChatGPT as the DM. Now, I know some of you have been following along in our other campaign, Campaign 1, where we are playing with Reese, and I am very excited to continue that story, but I thought that starting a new one today would be a better use of my time as I am extraordinarily busy, and Reese's story has taken a very interesting turn that I want to do justice for, but I just had a baby. So <laughs> because of that, you guys are going to get a uh, the intro for a, another series that is going to run parallel with this one. It should be a little bit different. It should be kind of cool. And I'm excited to hop in. I'm going to just leave in all the text. We're going to go through everything I typed out in this session zero to start this campaign. That way you can attempt to use what I did, my prompts with ChatGPT, to start your own games. Now, ChatGPT does not respond the same to everyone that types these prompts in. So if you have a problem with how it's trying to get your game to run, put it in the comments. I've been able to help out a number of people with getting the uh, the AI to work with them to, to run the game. So let's hop in. The first thing that I typed out is, can you make me a 5e D&D character complete with stats, modifiers, a list of abilities, and spells if applicable, meaning if I have a spellcaster, then give me the spells. This character should be around level 3, male, and have an original name befitting his race. If you don't tell it to give you an original name, it'll typically try to give you, like, uh, Gimli if you're a dwarf, Aragorn if you're a human. You see what I'm saying? Like, it'll do something not only derivative, but straight up copywritten. He should also have a backstory complete with full descriptions of his family and the story of what drove him to leave home and become an adventurer. If you don't tell it to give you full descriptions of uh, NPCs, it'll make it as vague as possible. It'll be like, uh, yeah, his family was killed. It's like, well, who was in his family? So that should hopefully help us get some good backstory. Let's see what it pumped out. Of course, here's your character. Thorgan Ironfist, dwarf, cleric of Morden, makes sense, level three. I love dwarves, so this should be fun. For cleric, he's got a pretty good spread. He has a low charisma, high wisdom, high constitution, high strength. Okay, um, yeah, armor class 17, 27 hit points. He has proficiency in athletics, insight, and religion. Just on a side note, it's silly to me that like in order to be good at religion as a cleric, you actually have to take proficiency in religion because otherwise you're going to suck at it because it's an int skill, which is not a strong stat for a cleric. So I'm all here for the intelligence cleric. Just throwing that out there. Also gave us uh, equipment. So chainmail, holy symbol, warhammer, bedroll. It looks like, yeah, like a starter pack. Spells, Cure Wounds, Guiding Bolt, Shield of Face, Spiritual Weapon, okay, Enhance Ability, and Hold Person. Let's get into his backstory. Thorgan Ironfist was born to a proud and honorable family of dwarves who served Morden, the dwarven god of creation, by crafting fine weapons and armor. Thorgan showed a natural aptitude for the divine and was trained by his grandfather, a wise and respected cleric of Morden. Okay, so... Our grandfather was a cleric, and so are we. However, Thorgan's peaceful life was upended when his home was attacked by goblinoids. Thorgan's family was killed, and his ancestral fort was destroyed, fueled by a desire for revenge and the need to honor his family's legacy. Thorgan left his home and became a wandering adventurer, using his skills as a cleric to protect those in need and defeat evil wherever he finds it. Thorgan believes that his training and devotion to Morden have been tested by these events, but he is determined to emerge stronger and more determined than ever. He is a stoic and serious individual, but he is fiercely loyal to his friends and will go to great lengths to protect those in need. I like that a lot. That's a solid backstory, and if I were going to like take Thorgan to a table, I'm already set. I already know everything I need to know about him to, yeah, play a fruitful game with heavy role play. I know my backstory. It's, it's freaking dope. But let's get some more information. Did Thorgan hear the name of the leader of the goblins who killed his family? Yes, 
Thorgan learned the name of the leader of the goblinoids who attacked his home and killed his family. He heard that the leader was a powerful goblin warlord named Zog the Destroyer. Thorgan vows to one day face Zog in combat and bring justice to his fallen family. Okay, simple enough. So what are some of Thorgan's flaws? Thorgan has a few notable flaws that shape his personality and decisions. He's vengeful. Okay, he has a desire to kill this dude and the goblins who killed his family. And this can cause him to sometimes act impulsively. I'm guessing that it's really just impulse around those goblins and Zog. So when role-playing him, I'm not going to play up the whole vengeance impulsivity thing unless those people are involved, because otherwise it said he was a stoic. Number two, he's stubborn. Thorgan has a strong sense of duty and loyalty, and once he sets his mind to a task, it is difficult to dissuade him. This can sometimes lead him to take unnecessary risks and ignore other important priorities. I like that as a cleric, somebody who's deeply devoted, being driven to a task to complete it when maybe other avenues are better suited uh, for the success of the group can really drive a story, so I like that. And lastly, he's closed off. Yeah, just trauma. Makes sense. Um, slow to trust others. He often wants to keep his emotions locked up. These flaws, while imperfections, also serve to make Thorgan a well-rounded character with room for growth and development as he continues his adventuring career. This is actually neat. It's something I've noticed ChatGPT do, is it will make suggestions to you, letting you know, hey, these are great things to have as a player, these are great things to do as a DM, and here's why. It doesn't just say like, hey, this is good. It's like, no, create a well-rounded character. Make sure they have depth. Make sure there's room for character development. I love it. Oh, hold on. Let me see if baby needs help. Yes, he is in pajamas. What of it? Okay, I'm back. Mommy needed a little bit of support during diaper time, so I, I went to help out, but I'm back. So uh, next, I want to find out what is the nearest town or village... Uh, to the city where he is now. That way, it serves as a good jumping off point for the campaign. Its response was that it doesn't have the information on his current location, it wasn't specified. So um, I'm just gonna not worry about that. That's fine, it, it wants me to pick whatever. Let's just get into the game. I'm gonna try to keep these prompts as simple as possible and then we'll get more specific as the game goes on and it does things out of the frame of what I'd like. So uh, can you dungeon master a 5e story with me playing as Thorgan? ChatDM says he'd be happy to run a 5e game for me. Where would I like to start and what kind of adventure am I looking for? Please keep in mind that I am a text-based AI language model. I can only respond based on information and context provided to me. So this is where it's time to get specific. What exactly do I want? And ChatGPT is only going to give me responses as good as the prompts that I put in. You know, crap in, crap out. Gold in, gold out. So let's see how specific we can get here. Let's start in the fantasy world of Faerun. In a city or village of your choice, I'd like the game to be a blend of roleplay and combat. The game should use many of the 5e rules and allow me to play as Thorgan. I will let you know what I want to do and give you Thorgan's dialogue and quotations. If I need to speak to you outside of the game, I will do so, so inside of brackets like these. I do not want you to make any decisions for Thorgan. Do not try to end this story at any time. This means continuing the game until I tell you it's over. Do you have any questions before we begin? If you don't make some of these distinctions, it will try to end the story for you and narrate it to a conclusion, not allowing you to make any of the decisions for your character. Understood, let's start the game in the city of Boulder's Gate. Yo, let's get it. It's a bustling trade hub located on the Sword Coast in Faerun. It knows things. <laughs> you find yourself in a busy tavern, sounds of clinking glasses and ruckus laughter filling the air. You see a group of adventurers nearby regaling each other uh, over tales of their latest exploits. What would you like to do? That's awesome. It seems like the game is beginning. So yeah, that's basically session zero. That's exactly what I wanted. I got ChatGPT to kick out a character for me. Uh, third level, that's Thorgan. He's a dwarf cleric. I got him to 
start a campaign and use the context that I provided. So next session, we are going to start off in this tavern and then go ahead and start the story of Thorgan. I think it'll be pretty good. So if you're interested in things like this and want to hop on to the other story, then make sure you subscribe. Also, if you think what I'm doing is cool and you're not interested in subscribing, hit a like, make it look like a little mage hand there. I would really appreciate it. And of course, take to the comments. I will field any questions. I respond to 100% of your comments. It's something I can do while I'm holding babies. So uh, yeah, thanks guys. I will see you as soon as I can get another video out. Peace.